Ho, ho, ho! It's that time of the season, friends. Yes, I will be reviewing a Christmas slasher film. Last year I reviewed Silent Night, Deadly Night, and this year I will be reviewing 1974's Black Christmas. Black Christmas was directed by legendary director Bob Clark. Bob Clark directed the infamous holiday Christmas movie, A Christmas Story. Yes, that guy that directed that film made Black Christmas. Black Christmas has been remade twice now. Once in 2008 and just recently in 2019's Black Christmas. Which... Uh, the, I have not seen the, the new one. The uh, 2008 remake actually was the first like version of the film I ever saw. Wasn't too impressed. Seemed kind of goofy and odd and very unintentionally just cringy. The original, however, is flawless in my opinion. Uh, a lot of people think the uh, this film, the original Black Christmas, was... Uh, the original slasher film. Uh, it predates Halloween. Halloween came out in 1978. This came out in 1974. So you do the math. Um, and it's very, you know, it's it, it's funny because uh, I, I would say, if anything, Friday the 13th seemed to be uh, in, in the footsteps of this with, like, the body count and the kind of creative way he kills people but the big difference between this film and friday the 13th and all its carbon copies or whatever is that this film uh, it's not bloody very much like a lot of mid-70s films that dealt with uh, realistic kind of uh horror you know like serial killers like texas chainsaw massacre not a very violent film at all this film, uh, it's the same way, but the way the kills are portrayed and the way the actors, your actresses, you know, perform how they're getting murdered in their scenes, it, it, it's really unsettling. Like, one of the images that's pretty much synonymous with the whole film series is the plastic bag suffocation scene where he strangles a woman with like a bag over her head. And he sets her in an attic. That's kind of what this killer does. He, he takes you and he puts you in an attic of this sorority house, which obviously is on a campus during Christmas time. And the, uh, the, the, the girls, the sisters, they're, they're kind of in between like leaving for the holidays. Some of them are staying. You know, there's a real cynical approach to the holidays in this. Um, you know, and, and one girl I think is missing and they kind of dismiss it, you know, like, oh, who knows? She was drunk. Uh, but it ends up, you know, not being the case and they have something to worry about. They're all kind of getting ready, I think, to leave the next day. They're, they're getting drunk and kind of hanging out in the kitchen and they get a phone call. You know, this, this person that calls them is a deranged fucking maniac. And the way... You know, the whole, the killer calls, you know, the, the girl or whatever on the phone. We've all seen it a million times, uh, you know, when a stranger calls, even scream. And there's something about Billy, the killer in this, the way he talks on the phone. It's not just what he says, which is fucked up. It's the way he sounds. It's the way he says it. It's sort of incoherent, perverted babble. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> 
on your fucking skin and sets the tone for the film. It's almost like once that happens, you're kind of like in a trance of, holy shit, this guy's fucked up. And it's not just the phone calls. You hear him kind of do this shit that he says. It's, you know, it's just like POV shots, which, you know, they were doing POV shots like this in 74. You know, it, it, it definitely, to me, has to be kind of, you know, the set the set the you know the the way to make a slasher film. I mean, that's what it really kind of seems to me. If the fact that it predates everything, and you know, it, it's so atmospheric too. I mean, I think there's definitely you know the obvious like Hitchcock stuff going on here. But also a little bit of, of Val Luton, very atmospheric, very, uh, what you don't see is way more than, you know, than what, or what you, what you don't see, or what you imagine is way more intense than what they could show on screen kind of stuff. Um, and it's just like, you know, it's just the, this, this, the weird little things in it that really get to you, like, the way, you know, the camera will just kind of pan over and, and how it'll show the exterior of the sorority house with the Christmas lights going and the desolation of winter and the holiday season. Uh, very, very eerie stuff, man. I, I, it, it's funny how they remade this film and tried to be excessively gore, gory and, try, you know, and now they're trying to kind of make it like sort of like an action film or something where... That's not the case. That's not what made this film work so well. It's, it's just, it's just craft. It's just Bob Clark crafting the shit out of, you know, a film, and, and making it a scary holiday film. Clark also was no stranger to the horror genre. He made a, uh, a zombie film, I believe it was 79, uh, you know, called Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. Actually, maybe it was not 79. But yeah, I mean, he was no stranger to doing this um, kind of stuff. So, you know, this, this, is, this is a very underrated film. Like, even though it's been remade and... Yeah, a lot of slasher fans and horror fans, they know about this film, but it's very underrated as like, man, this this was like done so well, uh, especially for its time, but also, you know, it being, you know, the catalyst. It, I don't know, I can't say enough about it. it it's so damn well made. Um, you know, and it, it's just, it's just, it's every bit of thriller, I would say, as much as it was, you know, this horror film. Because I think, you know, it was almost becoming like, you know, there's no supernatural stuff in this. It's just all real. And I think a lot of Christmas horror films, you know, they kind of kind of go for the, the supernatural stuff. Maybe because, you know, Christmas is about like magic and things like that, like Krampus, but... This film just, it really has that, ooh, man, this could happen. This could totally happen. And I think 
it was actually based off some real murders that were going on at the time in uh, Canada. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it's, it's different. It, it's, it really, really is in high regard for a slasher film, in my opinion. Like, it doesn't even feel like it. I mean, there's this sort of, you know, one uh, one by one body count thing going on in the, you know, where he's killing the sorority girls and and even cops. And, and you know, and you it's funny because like a lot of this, like, you'll see like, you know, the, the whole like, oh, there's a, there's a body, he got him. You know, you don't really see the, the murder happen, but you just see the aftermath. When that happens a lot in movies, you kind of just, you know what's coming. With this, it really, it surprises you. You're like, wow, wow, I didn't know that cop would be dead, or I didn't know she, it, it, it gets to you in that way. So, you know, this film, uh, it's, it's just, oh, it's so well made. I, I don't know how to really explain it. It's, it's not these remakes, or have it totally wrong. This is just on par with something that Hitchcock would have done. I, 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 I'm probably sounding like a broken record here, guys, but check out Black Christmas, the original, 1974. Don't accept any substitute. Fuck the remakes. Bob Clark was a genius. Can't say it enough, guys. Anyway, have a wonderful Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy, you know, whatever you celebrate. I hope it's great. Eat a lot of food and stay safe. Peace out, guys.